Hello, it is day nine of Advent on our countdown and the second week of Advent in the church. And today um, I was really kind of excited because our mini got a new mini mouse purse. It's even got little ears. It's pretty cute. I am just hoping and wishing for a top. She's got two skirts she can't wear. Uh, I don't know. And notice she's, uh, she's keeping this coffee cup over here. So anyway, Minnie, Minnie's happy with that purse for now, but it's going to, it's going to take, it's going to take some time to get that shirt that we need apparently. So let's see here in our advent calendar. I am looking for day nine. So we're going to pull out our book for today and let's see what we're going to read together. Today, aww. Lady's Christmas Surprise. So this is from Lady and the Tramp, one of the classic Disney movies. I have two dogs, so I'm very partial to this story. It was the week before Christmas. Tramp and the puppies gathered beneath Jim and Darling's brightly decorated tree. You all know what holiday is coming up, right? Tramp asked, his eyes twinkling. Of course, Dad, Scamp said. He was excited. Christmas was the puppy's favorite time of year. Lots of guests stopped by to wish Jim and Darling a Merry Christmas. However, the best part of Christmas was the presents. The puppies got to help choose a special gift for each of their parents. They loved being trusted with such important surprises. Do any of you kids know what your mother would like for Christmas? Tramp asked. How about a steak from Tony's restaurant? Annette suggested. Tramp shook his head. We can do better than that. We need to give her something special, said Colette, to show her how much we love her. So here is Tramp talking to the puppies. And they're trying to figure out what to give Mom, also known as Lady. Why don't you ask her what she'd like, asked Scamp, his voice muffled. He was chewing on a bow. We want to surprise her, Tramp reminded his son. He nudged him away from the presents. That's the fun of Christmas. Maybe we'll find something on our walk today, Annette said. Tramp thought that was a good idea. While Lady was taking a nap, he took the kids into town to look for the perfect present. The village bustled with sharp shoppers, their carriage wheels carving deep ruts in the snowy road. There they are going for their walk. And this is back before a lot of automobiles, so people still had carriages with big wheels. The dogs rambled up and down the avenue, looking in all the store windows. They saw sweaters, cushions, brush and comb sets, bowls, and collars. But Tramp knew that none of these things were the perfect gift for Lady. He wanted to find her something really special, something that she would enjoy and that no other dog would have. We call that exclusive. He's looking for an exclusive gift for Lady. Tramp and the puppies kept looking into the store windows and they peeked at the packages that all the people were carrying. All they needed was one really good idea. See, there's some standard dog things, bowls, brushes, combs, collars. You know what my dogs like for Christmas? Treats. <laughs> they like to eat special dog treats. When the sun started to sink in the sky, Tramp turned to the puppies and said, We'd better head for the alleys and dig something from the trash. As they crossed the road, Tramp noticed something sparkle in the snow. It was much brighter than an icicle. He turned it over with his paw. Holy ham, he cried. It was a gold and diamond necklace. What a bunch of rocks, exclaimed Scamp. What a good stroke of luck, remarked Annette. Just the right size for mother, added Colette. Tramp smiled and then scooped up the necklace with his mouth. They'd found the perfect gift. He knew it would look beautiful on Lady. Do you think there just happens to be a gold and diamond necklace laying in the snow that doesn't belong to somebody? Sounds like they found something that someone else lost. Suddenly, Tramp felt worried and dropped the necklace into the snow. It sparkled in the icy crystals. He frowned. What's the matter? Scamp asked. This isn't right, Tramp muttered. Then he looked at his children. Sorry, kids, but we have to return the necklace. It's not ours to take. But where would we go to return it? Colette asked. Yeah, it was just here in the snow, Annette said. 
How would we even find the owner? I say finders, keepers, Scamp cried. If you lost something very important to you and someone else found it, would you want them to return it to you? I would like my lost things returned to me. Come now, kids, Tramp said. We can take it to the police. They'll know who to return it to. With the puppies following, Tramp bounded down the snowy street to the local police station. And they're going to the police station. Look, they've got it. What a pretty little necklace. Look at that. Inside, officers hurried around, taking phone calls and writing reports. Tramp trotted up to the front desk with the puppies following behind. He dropped the necklace in front of the policeman and charged. What's this? The officer said as he looked at the dog and then to the necklace on the desk. He picked up the necklace and looked at the sparkling jewels. Tramp panted and wagged his tail. The puppies stood eagerly beside him. You found it? The officer asked. Tramp nodded. Good dog, he exclaimed. The policeman took the necklace and began filling out his report while Tramp and the puppies watched. There's the police officer helping them. At that moment, a woman rushed into the police station. Help! She cried. My necklace is gone. I'm offering a reward for its return. The policeman smiled at the woman and held out the necklace. Is this yours? He asked. He pointed to Tramp. This dog found it on the street and brought it here. The woman gasped. Thank you, she said. She scratched Tramp behind the ear. How can I repay you? Woof! Tramp looked at the necklace. A new collar, she said. That's it. She took Tramp and the puppies to the store next door. Tramp walked up to the counter and picked out a gold collar with green stones that looked just like the woman's necklace. I'll take that one, the woman told the sales clerk. So look, now he's picked out a collar for a lady that looks a lot like that pretty necklace. Christmas morning came and the family gathered to open presents. Jim and Darling sat and watched the dogs sniff each of the gift wrapped parcels. Lady tore open the wrapping on her gift, and as the paper fell away, her face lit up. So when your face lights up, it's when you get a big smile and you kind of shine. And so can you practice that looking really happy and surprised? That's what Lady did. You shouldn't have, she cried. Her eyes sparkled. Lady dipped her head as Darling reached forward to fasten the collar around her neck. As the collar snapped into place, Lady leapt into her feet and pranced around the room, hopping from paw to paw with her tail wagging. She was just like a show dog, wearing the best collar in town. Look at her pretty collar. And there's Jim and Darling. In the movie, he's Jim Deer and Darling. I love my new collar, Lady said. What a wonderful Christmas surprise. But I love my family even more. She nestled Tramp and each of the puppies. Merry Christmas, Mother, said the puppies. Together they made it a very Merry Christmas. Indeed. There they all are. Everybody's got their collars. Very nice. What a cute little story. So our story today is focusing on something that's really important. Yes, when we feel very strongly about our friends and our family. We want to get them a really special gift because they're special to us. But as Lady said, what was really the best thing are her family and her friends, her relationships. So even though we feel that really strong desire to find the perfect gift, really what we want to do is just let somebody know how special they are to us. That is the best gift ever. And as an adult, sometimes I manage to find the perfect gift for like my parents or my son. Uh, but sometimes it's really just about letting them know how special they are. And that we can do, not just at Christmas, but all the time. Every time we see somebody who is special to us, we can take the time to tell them, to show them with our smiles, with our hugs when it's safe, and certainly with our words. And then if we have the ability and we want to, then we can do it with a special gift. But we shouldn't just limit telling people how special they are to Christmas. God certainly didn't. Christmas was just the beginning of God telling us every day how much God loves us and is happy that we are God's. And so you can follow God's example and do the same thing. 
So this was a fun little book. I like reading about the dogs. This year, our dogs are going to be getting special treats like they normally do. And um, my parents are coming over and my son will be here. So all of our family will be together, which means that our puppies will be getting lots of hugs and kisses and cuddles and probably people feeding them people food, which we're not supposed to do. So we'll see. We'll try to limit that and have more and more safe dog treats on hand. But nobody's getting a new collar this year. My dogs got new collars last year, so they are set for their collars. Is there something really special that you are hoping to get this year? For me, I would like to get the opportunity to be safe and see people again. That's what I would like. And there are lots of people all over the world working to make that happen, not just for me, but for all of us. People who are scientists and researchers and doctors and nurses and all kinds of people that are doing their very best to make sure that we can be safe and together again. And that would be an awesome present for Christmas. So I hope that you will stay safe, that you will work on sharing how much you love the people in your life. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a great day, guys.